Yeah, that was, uh, that was wild. <laughs> Yes, so sad, this place could not have been preserved. All right, guys, we are here with my new friend, Evan, who I met at the fuel pumps at the Napa airport the other day when he rolled up in this absolutely stunningly beautiful Kit Fox. And uh, I'm kind of a bit of a bush plane fan. And so when uh, I figured out that Evan built this beautiful plane, I thought, man, we gotta do a little bit of a video for you guys on the channel. And so Evan, thank you so much for making some time. That's so. You've been building kit foxes and slings and stuff for a while now. Tell us just a little bit about what's very special about this plane that you're standing in front of. Well, I'd say the most special thing about this plane is that it's mine. <laughs> and uh, unlike a lot of the other ones. Um, so I've got a build assist program for sling and kit fox aircraft. And we've been doing it for four years now. Um, there's a total of nine or 10, 10. Uh, aircraft that have left our facility now with four more on the way and um, you know of course this is my favorite so this particular kit fox is a model 7 uh, STI so it's kind of got their higher lift wing uh, the cabane undercarriage tail wheel uh, suspension and um, it's a great great aircraft uh it's a lot of fun to fly once we go back in the back country here in a little bit it'll all make sense but as far as this aircraft goes specifically we did this build in a total of three months um, at my facility and <laughs> not a sustainable pace of course but we had the opportunity to get the new rotax engine the 916 um, has a little extra horsepower for takeoff um, this continuous horsepower is about the same but because this is a turbocharged engine, we get 160 horsepower for takeoff, 137 horsepower continuous. Um, and in the bush plane world, of course, that extra power for takeoff is um, awesome. So this plane, you'll get this off the ground, if it, unless we have a really excessive density altitude or you've got too much baggage in it. If you were, what do you think is the shortest you could get this off the ground in? Um, you know, I haven't measured it, so I don't know for sure. But it's it's right around 100 feet, probably just under with the right conditions. Yeah. And certainly, I mean, you give me a 50 mile an hour headwind, then okay, I'll do it in <laughs> sure. negative 10 feet, sure. right? But okay. You mentioned to me that you know you've been building these planes for a while, and of course, anytime you do something over and over again, you get better and better at it. And, and you've come up with some pretty cool innovations for your Kit Fox builds. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So yeah, um, there's a couple things um, that are bigger than others on this particular build. Um, basically, when I was going through this build, the Kit Fox being a little bit shorter coupled than a lot of other aircraft out there, it does have a tendency to yaw around on you a little bit in turbulence. Um, when I learned that through flying with other friends and stuff in their Kit Foxes, I said, well, I'm gonna put a third axis autopilot in it. And so I designed a mount position and everything for the yaw damper and i put it in and it actually works really well surprisingly enough right <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of the biggest thing uh, in addition to that part of the part of the reason i did it was the 915 road tags or the 916 is a little heavier of an engine than the kit fox was really designed for and so you do have a little bit of a forward CG uh, situation. And so I wanted that yaw damper back there to add useful weight to the tail as much as I could. Um, and it did help with that uh, a good amount. Um, a couple other things that I did on this one are um, this Kit Fox normally has the trim down here in the center console. And so when you're on approach to land, you're, you know, you're working the throttle, you're working the flaps and you're trimming all with one hand. So I really wanted a trim on my stick grip. Well, I couldn't find anywhere a stick grip that 
has only trim and push to tuck. So what else do you do but just design and make your own? So made a custom PCBs and, and everything for it and it fits my hand, my hand perfectly. Um, I think most other people have liked it as well. So we'll see how it fits my hand here when we go flying later. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's been great. Um, this particular plane also has a MT prop with a single lever control unit. So it's a constant speed hydraulic adjusted prop, but you don't have a prop lever. It's all done by the computer. So full throttle gives you 5,800 RPM. It's a Rotax for takeoff and you pull it back to 99% uh, throttle and below and it automatically repitches the prop for cruise RPM. So Evan, what, uh, I see there's a key lock there. What's, what's up with that? Yeah, so in another attempt to uh, kind of shift the CG around with the heavier engine up front, I, Kit Fox puts the battery pretty much right here, but it's inaccessible. So I wanted the battery up on the front for charging and those things. Plus you save a bunch of weight not running those heavy gauge cables through the fuselage. And so I've still got a heavy engine though. So typically, and they're not in there right now, I installed this toolbox here to keep all the tools that I always have on hand anyway. You know, your tie downs, a uh, simple tool kit for field repair, tape, things like that are typically back here and we'll put them in here before we leave. But, um, and that's worked out great. So with a combination of a couple pounds back here in this little baggage area, plus moving my battery to the front, yaw damper, and all those things, the CG's perfect and it works really well. I'm pretty happy with it. about flying these in a group is this STI wing with these planes being kind of heavy for kit foxes. Yeah. Throws off a mega wake. Oh really? So you'll see I'm trying to sit just a little bit above them all the yeah. time so we don't have to get deal with this turbulence. Yeah. And it's it's you'll know when you hit it. <laughs> it's pretty real. I remember the first time when I was out east training I was coming into uh, I forget the airport. It was a pretty big airport, and the controller said, you know, uh, warned me about wake turbulence of the, the previous, you know, commercial airliner that was coming in in front of me. And yeah. that was my very first time, you know, obviously I had studied it in the books and understood it and so forth. And he's just like, caution, wake turbulence, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, what, your job is to keep me out of it. What am I supposed to do right now? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to do a 360? You want me to slow down? Caution, wake turbulence. What does that mean? <laughs> What'd you end up doing? Uh, nothing. I just flew the approach and it was fine. Yeah. I think he was mostly just, you know, giving me a, a heads up, so to speak. But as a, as a rookie pilot, it was just kind of like, wow, okay, what am I supposed to do with this piece of information? Oh, and down we go. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. I'm going to try. Oh, I got to film some more for you guys out the camera here. Oh, that is very cool. Here we go. Shooting the canyon. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Look at this, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> it's hard to film because I just want to watch everything going on, but I got to make, I got to film too. Said something about that in the comment on Instagram or whatever. I was like, yeah, come fly with us, but fair warning, we're going to ruin aviation for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said yesterday when I was at the Cir in the Cirrus at 12,000 feet in IMC, we had some icing happening. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best day of flying I've ever had. <laughs> and, uh, you know, being as I'm an off-roader, dirt biker kind of guy, I have to say this is pretty damn cool too. Holy smokes. 
This is uh, kind of like dirt biking minus all the sweat and dust. See? Told you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Are we going water skiing? Uh, you're gonna water ski with Jason. He's way more experienced in the kit boxes than I am, and yeah. he'll, he'll do it. I water skied with another person, and uh, it was pretty cool. I haven't done it yet, and so this won't be my first time yeah, with the passenger. No, no, that's good. We do not need to have me in the plane for your first time of water skiing. You can definitely water ski. We'll just have you hop in his plane or have him do it with you in this one. Might might I have the controls for a little bit? It's all yours. Okay, my controls. Just make sure always hand fly with a hand on the throttle okay. back in here because we're gaining on him pretty yeah. good here. Okay, slowing it up a little bit. There you go. So yeah, you, the dirt bike, you're not going to ride it with no hand on the throttle. Nope, definitely not. Yeah, so add power, right rudder. Yeah. Pick out power, left rudder. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty noticeable. Yeah, I think I was back there, I was doing some pretty sloppy flying as I was making small power changes to keep the same distance from Jason and I. So he's probably going to fly this little saddle right okay. here. So you just follow him through it. Okay, will do. Nicely done. Thank you. You feel that in your ass? Oh yeah. Now we're gonna catch his wig. Ah, well let's get out of that. There, you there go. we go. Instantly smoother. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. <laughs> Just wait till the next one. So you see that little point thing, rock? I see many point, many point thing uh, rocks. Pretty close. There's like this island, then there's a little yeah. peninsula, then yeah. just beyond it, there's a rock that sticks straight up. Yeah, a big one. We're gonna fly between those two rocks right there, thread the needle. Okay. <laughs> well, if you weren't, that'd be pretty lame. I'd probably just yeah. push you out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just drop you off at the lake here, Trent. <laughs> there, he, is he gonna do it? He might get a taste. Hey, he looks like he's going skiing. So. He's got that giant ground adjustable prop for now because the lead time on MT props is like a year. Yeah. And so even at idle, he's, it's pulling him too hard and he can't get the airplane to, there it is. He can't get the airplane to stick down and, yeah, I should film that quick. Oh, the one wheel ski, so cool. Yeah, he's a very, very, very competent kit box pilot. This is the closest I've ever flown to another airplane before. Oh, dude, and if we were leading, he'd be like touching our wingtip. So the other thing, when it does yaw way out on you like that. Yeah. Winds are kind of wonky right here. Yeah. Um, when it does yaw way out on you like that, it's going to whip back the full amount to the other direction. So you kind of like anticipate that and okay. be ahead of it and you can get rid of it. Ooh. Yeah, this is, uh, wow, this is quite strange. Yeah, well, the winds are converging through these two little canyon things here. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty normal actually right here in this exact same area. Wow, this is a lot of turbulence, man, oh man. Really? Well, again, <laughs> I'm, when I, I say a lot of turbulence, it, whew. You know, you gotta remember, I have never flown, uh, yeah, in conditions like this before. This is all brand new for me. They yeah. don't teach you this in flight school. No, and they should, because it's awesome. Yeah. No, I've had way more turbulence than that when I'm way up in the air, but not when I'm like close to water, close to mountains, close to another aircraft. Yeah. And we do typically choose our flying days. Like I was saying, you know, it's work mostly, but when there's a really good day, yeah, like dead wind and cool air and, you know, all the things that make a good 
flying day. Yeah. Those are the days we go fly. Yeah. So typically, is that someone's private hunting cabin over there? I actually don't know what that cabin is, but I do know that we'll probably fly that canyon later today on the way back. Okay. That canyon leads to a strip called Spring Creek. Yeah. And it's a it's a really cool spot to go land. All right, yeah, I'm going to hand you back the controls now so I can uh, do more filming. Sweet. Yeah, so the winds were converging on those two canyons back there. Now look, it's the water. Smooth as glass. That's a glassy water landing yeah, if no I've kidding. ever seen one. We put one of these on floats a couple weeks back. He's going to land here. I was just going to say, we must be landing around here somewhere. We're not going to land here. I think no. he's just going to touch down and take back off. Here, let me get him on the other side. Dude, that strip doesn't look that bad. What's that? That spot doesn't look that bad to land. Ah, no, that's good. Is this where you do a good chunk of your flying? You just come bombing around out here? Well, it's so close that we do. Yeah. Letting him kind of get back out in front, but uh, he's way down there. Right there, see him? Yeah, okay. Um, we do, but it's like, I try not to too much, because then the backyard awesome playground isn't so awesome anymore once it's not a board of it. Yeah. Yeah. We do live in a good Behind place. Me. I'm like 100 feet above you, like yeah. straight on top of you. All right, I'm going to be off to the right, and I'm going to the lake bed. Yep. What's he going to do? Well, we're going <laughs> to... You hear that, guys? We'll see. <laughs> Damn, the chair in this thing is comfy. Not bad. Yeah. The slings are way better. My goodness, I could sit in a sling seat for 12 hours straight and get up like I wasn't sitting for that long. Oh, uh, after being in a diamond. Are you going to land on the left side of the road? And I'll land on the right. I uh, can, whatever you want. Let's do that. All right. Be on the left. Am I in your way? No, you're good. Right. I came in a little hot. Not my best, but it'll do. Got the job done. So now, what we do is this when you land at cool places you got to get out and look at the cool place for this absolutely it works for me the other kind of different thing about these with the flapperons is a stab of rudder to lead your turn helps okay it's weird yeah i noticed you know it was it would take me i was not i don't think i was doing a good job of of managing yaw Suffice to say, I have never flown in a canyon like this before. This is crazy. <laughs> Man. Nicely done. What a trip. I am starting Beautiful to get back the here. rudder first Heck stick yeah. second. Rudder yeah, first stick, stick second. You feel it, right? Yeah, starting to get there. Watch the flocks of birds. Yeah, yeah I'm going to stick well clear of those. We'll cut that corner a little bit. Man, I thought I thought that flock of birds was directly around him for a second there. I don't Yeah, once you lead with the rudder, then the stick, and then it's just regular rudder kind yeah. of through a turn. What a contrast. Yesterday I'm flying at five uh, twelve thousand feet on autopilot and uh, nowhere near the ground. And here we are pretending that uh, we're Luke Skywalker trying to <laughs> This is Top Gun, man. Yeah, seriously, this is incredible. All right, let's climb up a bit. Actually, let me take the controls. Your controls. Wow, guys. I don't know if the back camera is doing a good job of capturing what we just flew through. 
but that was something. Uh, what a thrill. Yeah, so we're going to land right up here in a second. Assuming the wind isn't too weird once we get up there. Okay. Oh, he did helicopter mode. I want it too. So we're climbing at what, 1,500 feet a minute right now? Yeah, about that. Yeah. What is the stall at? About 42? About 40. About 40. 40? But you can kind of play with the throttle, blast an air over the tail, and get your stall down. Especially this time of year when it's cool. Yep. Get it down in like 39, 38 maybe. Wow. So that's where we're going to go land? Oh, yeah. And actually, taking off from here is more fun than landing from here. Because you just go shooting over the edge, right? And then do you guys drop when you take off just for... I will admit I have a pretty big comfort zone, uh, but this is uh, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like any approach I've ever done with uh, huge sheer drops of cliffs and a big really guys are on the threshold. What was that? Got a big riser on the threshold. Okay. Oh yeah, wow. That was a big riser. Sorry, I get my feet off the rudder pedals. That was a serious riser. I've never felt one that big right there. Not sure how close I want to get to this. Dude, are you kidding me? Holy crap. I mean, the video does it no justice, but uh, that's pretty straight down. Every pilot you bring out here, they're all, they're all scared of heights. Uh, yeah. And that's the end of that runway. Oh, and down we go. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Is he landing right there? Yeah. Traffic, 12 o'clock, same altitude, less than one mile. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Yeah, that's an old homestead, all right. One mile. Up your flaps. <laughs> so we just landed at an old homestead out here. Are we in Oregon? Yeah, yeah, we're in eastern Oregon, not too far from uh, where we took off at Homedale. But it'll be interesting to go explore a couple of these buildings. All right, let's go check out the main house and see what we have in store here. So, nice little porch for some sitting. I think it's seen a little bit of a better day. What remains of a hot water tank. What remains of a kitchen. Man, this is some remote living. Oh, there we go. Little bathroom there. Cupboards probably could use maybe, maybe some refinishing, a little bit of paint. A little bit of drips from the ceiling. Let's check out what we got over here. This is probably, oh, we got a living room with fireplace. This is probably, what is that? That's a closet, not too terribly exciting. So we showed you the, uh, the builds and the hangar where we're at, and now you're seeing our house. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> home. Start home. So, so far I haven't seen any bedroom. Oh, okay, there we go. So we got two, maybe that other one wasn't the living room. It was the master with a fireplace in it, I think. This is the living room. And then over here, we've got what is undoubtedly or was a bedroom with another little closet. There's an upstairs. There's an upstairs. So there was an upstairs. There used to be a staircase right there. You can see it on the side of the building. and. Used to go up to uh, whatever room that was. So very cool. And then over here, we've got this one. Also looking a little weathered. You know, this is some Airbnb investment right here. <laughs> the floor is uh, seen a little bit better day.
Presumably this was a bedroom at one point in time. And then back here, so kitchen and uh, living room. So a one one special. Yes, so sad. This place could not have been preserved. I couldn't agree more. What a shame. So we've got a newer building here on the property that uh, the Forest Service put together as an emergency shelter. If you have an emergency, you can uh, come here and get a little shelter. We've got a little source of heat, a little place to eat. I'm not sure why the roll of carpet is hanging from the ceiling. Keep the rats. I'll keep the rats out, okay. And then we've got a shower. Cool. How's our fuel? Uh, about half. I'm gonna overfly Spring Creek up high, take a look at the windsock, see if we can go in there or not. You want us to wait out here? Or you want to? Is there room for both of us? No, we can both go in. Just like I took you in there last time. We stay up high, go in there, here drop back, and we'll come back and do a 180 and get loaded on the canyon. Perfect. Yeah, I forgot we already did that. So this plane, guys, requires a lot of coordinated running. I don't know if there's cows on this strip or anything. I need to go in there and look first. Yep. When doing the turns, and uh, when I was first flying it earlier in the video, I don't know, I was sucking. Didn't really have it figured out, but I'm starting... Oh, he's leaving us. I gotta go a little faster. Starting to get the hang of it. It's a very, very fun plane to fly. So he's gonna climb up here. So we're gonna do the same. Yep, and then we're going to go kind of following them in down that canyon street. Go this way. Okay. So helicopter mode? Apparently. Okay. A lot of right rudder for helicopter mode. Yeah, I see that. There we go, that's a little better. So this is another weird thing. Garmin hasn't figured out the 916 ECU either. So it X's out manifold pressure and fuel pressure at full throttle. Yeah, I noticed that earlier and I was wondering, I was like, man, am I over... Speedy rover ready to the engine. I figured, well, if I am, you're going to tell me. Oh, uh, it's yeah. So then, as soon as you pull out the throttle a little bit, boom, we got manifold pressure. Yeah. People are clamoring over this engine. Are they hard to get? Uh, not anymore. I got this one before you could get one. That's why we pushed so hard to get it to Oshkosh. Uh, so that okay. I didn't get a discount or anything. I just got to buy one before everybody. Yeah, it's like the SCU, everybody wants that, the single lever prop control. Yeah. Doesn't work. Everyone wants the engine, doesn't talk to the, the Garmin very well. Like, guys, as long as you understand <laughs> where this whole thing's at, okay. Most people end up not wanting it. Funny, back there, we were doing like 109 knots, and it just felt like we were doing about 170 knots. It's just from the oscillations in the wind, not, not ground reference. Yeah, it's just a whole Looks lot like more. Yeah, a, a, a little quartering headwind. He's gonna turn. You see the yeah the sock sock down there. So this is Spring Creek, just down off our left wing. Actually, it's right down there. Yeah. It's so, kind of bouncing back and forth. Headwind, quartering. Take a look at the irrigation pipes where the threshold is. Get an eyeball of that and picture yeah. that in your head. Yep. Dude, that sock's telling us it's perfect in there. Yep. So when you're flying through canyons, pull back the throttle, he's yeah, way slow. Yeah, yeah. Just when you're flying through, out. I just hope this converging canyons right here aren't swirling bad. He's supposed to, the etiquette's to stay on the right side. Okay. Just like the highway. So he's gonna pull a U-turn up here, is he? I think so. And if that's the case, I'll probably take it yeah. from you after that. Uh, I don't mind at all. Alright, I got it. Your controls. Just give yourself some space between me and you. I was just thinking yep. exactly that. So, yeah, are we a little close to be landing right behind him? No, uh, I can I am slowing up now. I don't see him. Oh, he's back that way. At our 5 o'clock. Perfect. Yeah, it's beautiful down here. All right, so we're doing about 58 knots right now. It's all miles an hour. Or miles an hour, okay. And headed into, this is called Spring, Spring Creek? Spring Creek. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was, uh, that was wild. <laughs> Some dead air. That's what a big engine will do for you, though. Yeah, thank you. I felt a sinking, and then I saw your hand go right to the firewall. I'm like, I hope the sinking stops. I was adding it slow at first, and it wasn't doing anything. I know. Trust me, I was well aware. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a landing strip for rookies. Do not try this at home. So did the tail wheel hit first? That was pretty much all three, all three at the time. same time? Yeah, okay. All right, guys, this is our last uh, takeoff, canyon takeoff of the day. been sitting there for quite some time. Yep. Come on, turn for me. Here she comes. Right away we go. And away we go. That was a weird one. Did you just release all of your flap rounds at once? I only had one notch in. Oh, you did. Okay. 